where uh, you can easily share code, you can easily fork code, and uh, like comment, and uh, a lot of really, really talented uh, programmers are using GitHub. So I think uh, more people should like just uh, <coughs> play around with different things. I mean, I don't really use a graph <laughs> database yet, and I implemented mostly to showcase how it could be done using Redis. But uh, I think it's a neat uh, way to to experiment with different ideas. And what I need a graph database, I can just use this as a template to build something more powerful on top. So this is the basic implementation, and it's very, very few lines of code. Uh, and actually, uh, Redis is like a great and also a bit creative <coughs> database uh, that has a lot of potential. So this is how to play around and how I think most creative people are playing around with different ideas and trying different stuff. And I think uh, if we want to be creative as programmers, we need to play around more and not just uh, focus on assignments or a virtually related task, but uh, just try different things, maybe different frameworks, different languages that challenges us and uh, pushes our limits of, of what we can achieve. And this is really, uh, I think, the core. I have done actually some research on creativity before I I went here, so, and the, the most research I could find is that there's like a great correlation between working hard and challenging yourself, and in that process, achieving creativity, uh, because uh, creativity does not really come by itself. I mean, it's not something you can take in a book and read about. It's something that you achieve after a certain amounts of work and actually for most like really creative people like Picasso or Mozart or Einstein <coughs> it has taken them a lot a lot of work to achieve their uh, greatness and uh, their creativity levels and I think uh, we as programmers also need to realize this so you don't really become creative by just reading or uh, you, you must be doing and you must work hard and you must challenge yourself mm. and uh, this brings us on flow which uh, is uh, a term in psychology and uh, uh, a lot of scientific work has been done into flow and it is said that uh, researchers have found that achieving a flow state is positively correlated with optimal performance in the fields of artistic and scientific creativity. So uh, flow is like a, uh, a state of mind uh, where we are just focused on one task and your whole uh, body and mind is concentrated on that task. It's the most commonly known, I think, like being into the zone or uh, being in the moment. And it is uh, across fields. So you have uh, like being in the zone in sports, you have it in programming. Uh, at least I have, I mean, most of my really good work has been done like in a flow uh, or in the <coughs> zone where I just uh, shut everything out and uh, time passes. Uh, like uh, uh, I can feel like minutes and uh, this kind of state is very important, at least from what I could uh, read about creativity. Uh, so we as programmers want also to achieve this, and there is a way to achieve this. And this way is uh, represented in this graph. So on the x-axis we have skill level, and on the y-axis we have challenge level. So the thing we want to do is to uh, always 
pick something that requires our uh, highest skill level and something that challenges us uh, a lot. And in this state, we perform best. And in this state, we are most likely to achieve creativity. The problem is, and I, I can I can really relate to this, is like when you pick something that is too low sk skill level, and uh, then you get like an empathy or, or, or boredom. And I feel that a lot like when working with some uh, work related tasks. And the students can also feel like uh, if the skill level is low and uh, the challenge, uh, I mean, the skill level is lo low and the challenge level is high, then they go into either in worry or anxiety. And uh, like, if you haven't really studied that much and you have a really hard test, then you would probably be in this state. But uh, if you have like studied hard, achieved some skill level, then maybe you don't really worry that much about it. And maybe you are even like expecting a good grade, so you are in this state. And I think this uh, diagram represents uh, a good deal how to pick tasks uh, and how to keep pushing yourself and keep challenging yourself. Because the more you are into this state, the better you become. And this is true for board like sports and art. Uh, so yeah. the. The most crucial thing is here is just if you want to uh, achieve creativity or become better, you must keep pushing yourself to the limit and keep challenging yourself in uh, all your work. And if you don't, then uh, I mean you can just like hit a plateau where your skill levels don't really move up. So we can then ask ourselves how can we like create an uh, environment for ourselves where our creativity can flourish. And this is actually hard because like I said most education systems and most uh, workplaces punish creativity. So if you do anything outside the norm you are punished instead of rewarded. And uh, John Cleese who is a great uh, English comedian and uh, I've seen a great <coughs> presentation o uh, by him on uh, on creativity and you can find it on uh, on YouTube and in that presentation he says following if you are racing around all day ticking things off on list looking at your watch making phone calls and generally just keeping all the balls in the air you are not going to have any creative ideas and I think this is really true. And I see a lot of people, and I'm actually included sometimes in this, that are just multitasking on a thousand different things. And they, they are not really challenging your, uh, themselves. Uh, because if you, if you can multitask on, on a lot of stuff, like you instant message, you blur, you write your thesis, or you, you write some code, then you, your code or your task isn't hard enough if you can multitask between different things. That's at least how, how I see it. Uh, and actually also something that he talks a lot about, like uh, interruptions are really, really a killer for creativity. Because each time you have a context switch, where you like switch between, uh, uh, between work then uh, you are not really in the zone and you're not really in the flow. You're just like doing robotic work and you won't really achieve any creative ideas. And I can relate to this. So the thing he proposes is uh, the way to like create an environment for creativity is this. And he, he says this in his presentation. To be creative, you have to create a kind of, a or of an oasis in your life. Boundaries of space and boundaries of time. So what he means uh, with this is that uh, you have to have some time off 
where you just shut yourself off interruptions and uh, do some time, like two hours maybe, where you just uh, maybe go to a coffee shop, you turn off your cell phone, you turn off your internet, and you work on the creative idea you have, maybe implementing a, a program. And I think this is a really great tip of how, how of how to try to create a, a creative environment, even if you are not working in a creative company, or even if you are like a student that uh, that is like doing assignments and that are not really pushing your creativity. So. I will uh, end this talk now, and I will end this uh, with this. And it's really that uh, it's uh, being creative and creativity is not something we can learn. It's something that we do. Uh, so that means going uh, home and coding on different ideas, trying different st stuff out, and maybe also trying to incorporate something or read something about flow and how we can <coughs> work smarter and work harder and how we can really push ourselves and our uh, learning curve because in in most cases actually achieving creativity takes a lot a lot of time and most really creative people have spent like most of their time or most of their lives working really really hard on achieving something insightful uh, and if we want to do this then uh, we have to know something about the psychology of work and something about uh, playing around. And I think it's a, a, a mix of those two things that create creative people and creative programmers. So I will upload uh, these slides and also the research I have done. Uh, and there are some really great presentations on creativity in general, which I think uh, people should check out. So let's uh, do a questions section.